a young MMA fighter and his sister receive a message from their father, leading them to a strange building. The siblings and a friend discover that the building is a gateway to parallel Earths. A man is packaging his belongings in a hurry as a group of shady-looking men arrives outside his house carrying guns. The man carefully places a package wrapped in a newspaper page inside his bag. One of the armed men screams the name Carver, demanding he gets out. Elsewhere, a young fighter gets beaten up by his larger opponent. Knocked down, he tries to do an armbar, but his opponent just lifts his body to the air and slams him back down. The young man is then punched in the face until he bleeds. After the fight, the young man, Ronan Carver, is cleared for head trauma by an EMT. An old man approaches him, criticizing his aimless drive to fight, then hands him his payment. Ronan receives a voice message from his dad, telling him to come home and get to a certain building at 156 Prospect at exactly 6.19pm on Sunday. Later, Ronan replies to his dad, who he hasn't heard from in two years. He finds his way to a house and calls out to his dad, but the place is seemingly empty. Ronan gets surprised by his sister, Beatrix, and they talk briefly about their dad not being the same after their mom's death. Ronan mentions the message he got from their dad that Beatrix received as well, weirded out by its strange details. The siblings check their dad's car in the garage, but there's still no sign of the man. A neighbor named Harold comes over to greet Beatrix warmly and Ronan somewhat civilly. They catch up for a bit when Beatrix asks Harold about their dad. Harold recalls seeing some guys with Mr. Carver at the house the previous night, saying he heard someone yelling. At Harold's prompting, they check the car's trunk and find a bag inside. Once they go inside the house, the three go to Mr. Carver's jump bag, which Beatrix associates with her dad's frequent travels for work. They also find the item wrapped in the newspaper page, which turns out to be a strange-looking ball. Ronan is startled when he seemingly activates the ball. Beatrix is shocked to see the newspaper page which reads, Clinton assassinated, Gore takes oath of office, contradicting what they know. Ronan resists Harold's suggestion to call the cops, reasoning that their dad could be on a trip, and prepares to leave. Beatrix thanks Harold and gets in the car with Ronan, but Harold comes with them to escape his mom's yelling. At the police station, Captain Stone dismisses Ronan and Beatrix's request for help. The captain finds nothing fishy about Mr. Carver disappearing with no sign of foul play. Ronan mentions the address 156 Prospect and Captain Stone says the building in question has been empty for years. The three later reach the building at 156 Prospect. They go inside, finding it abandoned with graffiti all around the walls. They read a few of the spray-painted messages describing strange events or phenomena that occur on different Earths. Each Earth is numbered and indicates anomalies like historical events happening on a different date or the population compromising entirely of twins. An alarm-like noise accompanied by flashing lights startles them, so they try to get out of the building. Beatrix struggles with opening the front doors for a moment until she stumbles out to a wildly different landscape. The three of them step out, gawking at a desolate urban area filled with trashed cars and destroyed buildings, with no people in sight. Beatrix and Harold freak out, thinking the city was attacked, but Ronan notices that the building they just came out of is the only one intact. Beatrix realizes that considerable time has passed after noticing the overgrown plant life. She sees two strangers walking nearby and starts shouting for help, but one of them points a gun and warns the group to leave them alone. However, the strangers get into a shootout with a group of armed men riding a pickup truck. The new arrivals spot Ronan, Beatrix, and Harold, who run back inside the building. They climb up a few floors and peer out the windows to see that the armed strangers remain outside. The strangers leave soon enough to the trio's bewilderment. That night, Ronan and Beatrix try to think why their dad would send them there. Harold offers a theory that the multiple worlds described by the graffiti might be real, just like the ones they are in now. They get surprised by a girl coming out of the shadows, who confirms Harold's theory. The girl introduces herself as Polly, who further explains that multiple versions of Earth do exist simultaneously. She mentions how some people think every possible Earth exists, given how there are so many variations. Harold asks Polly when they can go home, and the girl says the building jumps every 36 hours. They also have to be inside the building before it jumps, or they might get stuck in one of the Earths. When Beatrix asks how they can get home, Polly replies with, That's the Big Danny, a reference to a TV show on her world. Ronan is skeptical of Polly's assertion of her coming from an alternate Earth, but Polly replies that his argument is subjective. She then advises the trio to stay hidden and try not to die within the next 32 hours. The next morning, while watching Beatrix sleep, Harold is startled by the appearance of a group of armed men. 
One of them radios their chief, informing him of their capture. Ronan, Bedrix, Harold, and Polly are taken to an abandoned factory to meet the chief, who turns out to be another Captain Stone. He starts questioning them, but Polly manages to talk their way out of trouble, concealing the fact that they're travelers from different worlds. However, just as Chief Stone decides to let them go, Harold slips and calls him Captain Stone, arousing suspicion yet again. One of Chief Stone's men, Tinker, asserts that Ronan's group coming from the building means they're dangerous. He likens them to a certain man who came out of the building carrying a nuke, which apparently destroyed two-thirds of the city. Beatrix fails Tinker's test of knowledge of this earth, validating his doubts. He then takes over the interrogation of the group from Chief Stone. Later, the group is locked up somewhere in the factory when Polly states how revealing they're from an alternate universe never goes well. Tinker arrives and orders his men to take Ronan and Beatrix. The siblings are taken to a workshop area where they are restrained separately. As Ronan rages, trying to free himself, Beatrix stops him by saying she remembers how their mom died. When Ronan stops, Beatrix asks her brother why he left her to take care of their dad, to which he replies that he had to protect her from himself. Tinker arrives and Beatrix tries to get into a friendly chat with him. Tinker calmly calls out her tactic but explains his interest in electronics. He then recalls how the development of portable nukes eventually led to the destruction of their city and his family's demise. The incident has prompted Tinker to learn more about nukes and reveals a makeshift bomb he created. Tinker proceeds to question Beatrix, asking who the man was in the building carrying nukes that eventually killed his family. When Beatrix is unable to give an answer, she is shown surveillance footage of the building, showing a man emerging from it carrying a suitcase. Shocked, she recognizes the man as her father. Later, Tinker intimidates Beatrix with his custom gun, threatening to shoot Ronan if she doesn't answer his questions. Then, he asks Beatrix about the building and its inner workings, eventually approaching Ronan and pointing the gun at him. Panicking and failing to give an honest answer, Beatrix tries to bluff, but Tinker sees right through her. Ronan manages to choke Tinker using his legs, knocking the old man out. Breaking the pipe he's cuffed to, Ronan uses Tinker's keys to free Beatrix, wondering who even their dad is. Tinker wakes up and activates the makeshift bomb, prompting Ronan to knock him out with a punch. To the siblings' horror, they see the bomb is set to explode in about 39 minutes. Afterward, Ronan and Beatrix rescue Harold and Polly from their guarded cell. The group then steals a car and drives out of the factory. Meanwhile, Chief Stone finds Tinker wheeling the bomb out and planning to take it to the building to destroy it. Chief Stone fails to dissuade Tinker, who encourages the others to get away from the bomb's 5-mile blast radius. He then borrows a truck to drive the bomb to the building. As the stolen cars run out of gas, Ronan and the others proceed on foot to get to the building. Once inside, Polly reads out the end of the 36-hour countdown, but the building doesn't jump. Outside, less than 30 seconds remain until Tinker's bomb explodes while the man tries to get inside. Ronan apologizes to Beatrix, and just as the light starts flashing, the bomb goes off. Later, Ronan, Beatrix, and Harold wake up, still inside the building. They ask Polly, who's walking toward the exit, if they're home, but she replies that there's no going home. The group then goes outside the building to a bustling, advanced-looking city. When Ronan wonders if it's the future, Polly reminds him that the building only jumps between Earths, but remains on the same date and time. Ronan and Beatrix immediately plan to seek out their dad, deciding to split up and meet back at the building. Harold wants to accompany Beatrix while Ronan decides to take Polly with him to search his family home. Polly reminds them about the 36-hour time limit and they split up. On their way, Polly seems to forget Ronan, Beatrix, and Harold's names, to Ronan's confusion. As they leave, Tinker steps out of the building, appearing to have escaped the explosion. Ronan stops at a food cart and orders the only offering called a crombie. Meanwhile, Harold and Beatrix come across a borderless phone in a gadget shop. Harold tries buying it with his credit card, but the shopkeeper declines, saying bio only. At the food cart, Beatrix probes Ronan about his relationship with his family. Ronan shares how he's different from his intellectual family, lamenting his life as a human punching bag to which Polly disagrees. At the gadget shop, the shopkeeper explains that the biometric payment system uses hand scans to take money from a person's account. Harold scans his hand and it goes through, noting how there's a version of him in the database. The shopkeeper comments that Harold is a regular customer and lives around there, so Harold asks him for the address. Back at the food cart, Rona tries scanning his hand to pay, but there's no record of him in the system. The food cart waitress notes that everybody is in the system, leading Polly to believe that Ronan is either dead or non-existent in that world. Soon after, Tinker enters the gadget shop and buys all the electronics there. Eventually, Harold and Beatrix arrive at other Harold's residence. 
Harold convinces Beatrix to enter his alternate self's home to use whatever resource might be there to help search for her dad. The two gain access to the apartment by using Harold's fingerprints. Beatrice finds a laptop locked with a password and asks Harold to tell her, thinking it might be the same. Reluctantly, Harold says his password is Beatrix928. Beatrix is surprised by the implication, but the password works. Concurrently, Ronan and Polly arrive at the Carver's family home. Ronan's key unlocks the door to Polly's surprise. Finding the house empty, the two later hang out in the kitchen when Polly asks what Ronan will do upon finding his dad. Ronan says he'll give back the package and brings out the strange ball. While not recognizing the object, Polly realizes it came from the core world. In the apartment, Beatrix discovers that her father, Alex Carver, died three months ago. They see the news report on it and says he was killed in the very same building at 156 Prospect. At the Carvers, Polly tells Ronan that the building looks the same regardless of which Earth it appears in. Whoever made the building, she speculates, must be from the hyper-advanced core world, where no one has ever been to. When Polly asks Ronan how his dad got the ball device, he replies with a Big Danny reference to Polly's confusion. Back in the apartment, Beatrix and Harold read Alex Carver's obituary, which acknowledges his deceased wife, Livia, and surviving daughter, Beatrix, but there's no mention of Ronan. At the Carver's house, Ronan and Polly go to what is supposed to be Ronan's room, but with none of his things. Polly describes it as a parallel universe deja vu. Soon after, Ronan opens up about his guilt at being responsible for his mother's accidental death while they were driving home one time. He somehow hoped that even in this parallel earth, things might have been better. Polly then advises him to get used to the deja vu since some worlds have stark differences while others can be weirdly similar. Ronan tests this by going to the garage and opening the car's trunk, where he finds the jump bag. He opens the jump bag in the kitchen, finding yet again the newspaper wrapping. He opens it and the word Ronan get out are scrawled there. Just then, a car arrives outside, from which three armed men emerge. One of them shouts for Carver to get out. The men go inside the house, checking each room until Ronan engages them with his bare fists. One of the men aims his gun at Ronan, but Polly shows up and zaps the intruder with a strange looking weapon. As they leave the house, Polly refers to the armed men as strangers. She and Ronan then drive off in the stranger's car. Meanwhile, Tinker tests out the large toolbox looking machine that he created, which causes the city's power grid to fluctuate. He closes the box and leaves the shop with a satisfied look. Finally, Beatrix and Harold prepare to leave the apartment to look for Ronan. Harold hangs back to mess with the computer when he encounters an alternate Beatrix, who mistakes him for her husband. Harold leaves soon after. Later, Tinker drags his machine inside the 156 Prospect building just as Ronan and Polly arrive close by. Inside the building, Ronan finds Tinker and grabs his collar, but the latter threatens to fry them both with a dangerous looking contraption. Tinker explains his plan to call the attention of the building's operator. He reasons that whoever that might be, they're just somewhere inside, hidden atop the higher floors. Tinker activates his device and the building starts to rumble. Polly deduces that Tinker hacked the building as the old man gives it another go with the device. Beatrix suddenly appears, pointing Tinker's gun at him, and warns the old man to stop what he's doing. Ronan stops Beatrix, saying he wants to find out why their dad sent them there, and the people upstairs might have an idea. Beatrix lowers the gun and Tinker reactivates his machine. The building continues to rumble until the elevator bell rings, catching the group's attention. The door opens and Alex Carver walks out. He asks Tinker how the machine could tap into the building when no one has done it before. Tinker continues to activate his machine, demanding to know why Carver killed his family. Carver alludes to a purpose for Tinker's world being put to the torch, but such answers lie in the building's upper floors. He makes an enraged Tinker choose between destroying the building or getting his answer upstairs. Tinker then lifts his hand off the machine console and enters the elevator to take him up. Carver greets his children, then reveals that he's been traveling for a long time and was born on a different earth. Furthermore, Carver's wife was also a traveler who wanted to protect her kids from the building. Carver then tells Ronan that they'll be needing the ball-shaped device to find their mother, who's not really dead, to the sibling's confusion. Carver explains how his wife is capable of reaching the core world and that Ronan and Beatrix need to bring the device to her. When Ronan asks why, Carver says that the building's upper floors are abandoned, prompting his interest in Tinker's machine. He tells the siblings to use the machine to find their mother and look for the core world. Just as the elevator returns, Carver borrows the gun from Beatrix. Tinker tries to step out, yelling about Carver lying, but Carver shoots him and the elevator doors close again. Carver walks to the exit, saying he has his own war to fight, and leaves the building. 
At the same time, the building's lights signal another jump. The group gathers around Tinker's machine, trying to figure out its interface. Ronan presumes the grid of intersecting lines are possibilities as he and Beatrix agree to take on the mission for their mom. Ronan presses the screen and the building arrives on another Earth. Ronan, Beatrix, and Harold exit the building, but Polly hangs back. She convenes with two other versions of herself, deciding whose turn it is to set off outside. Then, one Polly takes the jacket of the other Polly and steps out of the building. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.